Hello everyone, my name is Corazar, and welcome to Vintage Story 1.18 Preview 1. Yes folks, here we are. If you have been living under a rock, or if you just don't happen to read all of Tyrant's posts, we are in Vintage Story 1.18 in a brand new world. And I'm going to do a small mini-series to go along with the other series I'm doing. And we're going to spend a couple episodes here just kind of going through 1.18. I'm not sure how many we'll do yet, maybe like two through four, somewhere in there. And I think that will sort of let us cover some of the main thrust of what 1.18 entails. And boy, is that a big hill. Goodness. I am going to break this up into a couple sort of themed episodes. This episode, we're going to explore the new landforms and the new oceans. And in the next couple episodes, we are going to look at the gameplay changes, maybe some of the new crafting recipes, as well as the new story. So be warned, this is going to be a series of spoilers. So if you're not interested in spoilers and you don't want to have 1.18, you know, lose all surprise for you, then you probably shouldn't watch much more of this episode or the next couple. So with that being said, I think we should get to it and get out of this hole. And let's take a look at what we have here. Now, I'm here in creative and we're going to just take a spin around the world and see if this looks or feels any different. Already, I can see things that I really wouldn't see in a 1.17 or earlier world, such as this gentle slope. Ooh, and that terra preta. Hmm, <laughs> yes, please. But look how gentle this slope is. Like, it's got two or three blocks, four, sometimes even five, before you have another step up. This is a big change from 1.17 and earlier, where you really don't see this very often at all. If ever, frankly. While there are some sort of large flat areas, they typically have a lot more sort of jagged edges. Those are noisy bunnies. So this is already something that we really wouldn't have seen, at least maybe not quite right at the start. It's just an unusual landform. It's just so much smoother than I'm used to. Now that being said, I am still seeing a lot of sort of bumps and boils here. I don't know if that is part of the 1.18 land gen or if that is something that Tyron is looking to smooth out. These do, these do strike me as very 1.17 slash old vintage story kind of formations here. Let's go ahead and we are going to do a couple of things. We're going to take a spin around at a higher speed, so I'm going to hit F2, and we're going to rush around. Hey, look at this plateau. This is already pretty cool stuff. Big forests. Here we go, here's a mountain. A weird, this is definitely a sort of 1.17 looking land generation. I don't know if this is using the new features of the 1.18 land gen, or if Tyron kept in some of those. And here we have a lake. Are you an ocean? I have heard tell that there are oceans in here, and there are bugs galore. Look at this stripe right here. I already had to delete one test world and start this one fresh because, uh, yep, I dug a little ditch and it uh, blew the game up. See, so yeah, let's take a spin around the world and just, whoa. Okay, that was quick. <laughs> so this, yes, this is definitely a 1.18 landform. Look at this nice, smooth mountain. If you wanted to, if you wanted to live amongst the bears and wolves, definitely, you could carve out a little place on the hillside here and make it yours. That is really nice and smooth. So yeah, this is the kind of new land generation you can expect to see with the new 1.18 landforms. It looks almost like the 1.18 and 1.17 and earlier landforms are kind of mixed together, almost. Because we're still seeing these really jagged, weird things that are definitely familiar. But right next to it, through the fog, we have this. And you know what? We're going to just change that weather. No rain, thank you. But here is another large, flat plain. There is a new, very flat sort of terrain type, and I think this might be it. I mean, it's very, very flat, as advertised. 
this would be a great place to build a big sprawling base and look at this nice slope down into this sort of gravel desert here this wasteland I think that is pretty magnificent that is such a nice slope I know here we are you know talking about just gentle slopes you'd think this would be really unexciting but having come from the jagged craziness that is vintage story I think it warrants looking at hey commodity trader and we're gonna check you out later I think in a different episode but yeah look here how we have this old vintage story jagged stuff popping up right out of the gentle slopes of the new generation that is pretty wild and here we have another mountain this one looks to be yeah probably another new terrain generation we're seeing a lot of granite or bare rock in general in the other test world i had before it went kablooey i also saw a lot of large areas of just bare rock which was interesting i don't know if it's intentional it is i think new to the game although maybe because we're at such a high elevation it might be more normal so yeah i think overall i'm definitely impressed with this new generation I think it's kind of weird to have some of the old, really jagged stuff mixed in. But like here, you know, this this could be old or new generation. It's kind of hard to tell. Because you do get this kind of weird, you know, thumb thrust up through the land in 1.17 and earlier. But this could also be 1.18. I don't know. I know that this surrounding area is definitely the new landform. Look how smooth this is. This is great for building. This is absolutely spectacular for building. And then right over here, we have more of what could be 1.17. We have these sort of weird, broken-up plateaus. Kind of cool place to build, actually. Let's just slow this down a little bit. There we go. But this, here, check out this plateau. It's a plateau, but it's also following the shape of the land underneath. That is really cool. I don't think we would see that in 1.17 at all. Something else to note is that the map has been changed. One, the map screen itself is actually bigger than before. You're gonna see there's a new background to all the maps and other features. I can bring up the inventory and the character screen. We have these the sort of new pixelated background. And the map itself also has different shadows. Notice how stark the light and dark side shadows are on here. It is a very different map and much easier to see where there is elevation changes. Now the landform changes are not the only major changes to land generation, or should I say terrain generation, in 1.18. There's also new ocean generation. Now we have here a standard world in which I change no parameters, but I hear tell that if we go into the terrain generation, when we make the new world, we can change how much water coverage the land has. And even this right here, I really don't think you would see this kind of water generation with these sort of little islands sticking up. This is not something you would see. Water like this would be very deep, very fast. And that's very dark, okay. We're gonna not go underwater. But yeah, look at how big and look how just clean this lake is, and look how deep it goes under there. Oof. Spooky. So let's head out into... Oh my. I swear, every time I start to try to back out and lit up a new world with some ocean, I run into something new while I'm sort of zipping around here. But yeah, look at this. This is sort of one of the things that Tyron showed off about. These mountains that kind of hit the water and create these really awesome overhangs. You could build like a secret pirate cove in here. Ooh, and then over here we have something else new, which is there's a geological activity heat map that's been added to the existing heat maps in the game. And you can now get these hot springs generating here. And I tried this out in the previous world, but uh, you don't want to go in these. We're gonna change this to game mode one. Ow, 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 ow. Quite hot. But yes, you can get these hot springs. I don't know if they'll be used for anything, except for, ooh, maybe trapping bunnies. And I don't know if you can, I don't know, can we collect this? 
with hot spring bacteria mat, 65 degrees. I think this might be something to play with in a later episode while we are exploring what is going on in Vintage Story. But yes, let's back out and let's go to the main menu and let's see what settings we can tinker with to get interesting new world types. All right, back on the main menu, you'll notice again the background and there's a new font at play here. It's a little, it's a little thin. I think this could do for a semi-bold or bold style, but let's go ahead and we're gonna make a new world. I'm going to customize this world and let's just do the same seed of zero for all of these. Now, somewhere in here, there is supposedly an ocean setting. Ah, down here, here we go. No oceans. So we have no oceans, very large lakes, continental and island world. Let's go to each one of these and we'll just take a quick peek around to see just how this impacts the world generation. And we're going to call this lotion, or lotion, because there's not much ocean. It's lotion. And we will confirm that skin and take that class. We're going to go into creative mode straight away. And wow, hello. And let's go ahead and fly around for a bit and see what we find. Hey, look, a very large lake. So just how big is this lake, you might ask? Well, it is so big that we can go to the middle and not see any land. That is very, very new. Let's see how far we have to go before we find land again. We're still going. My eyebrows are very much raised right now. Oh wow, here we go. We have we have an island ooh, with uh, some bauxite, it's kind of cool. And then finally we have some more land again. And this is a, okay, it's pretty big. This area is actually also kind of an island with a few little strings of smaller islands and archipelago. And yeah, that's, um, we are three kilometers out in a lake, basically. So yeah, let's keep going. Seagull rocks, survival island challenge. Land ho! Is this the actual land? Oh, here we go. Yes, it is. Look at that. So on the opposite side of this lake, we have a gigantic mountain. I really love these sort of long, flat, walkable ledges. You could make a little house somewhere up here. Maybe dig it back into this sort of little area here. Oh man, this would be a really cool place for a little lonely house and then have a sort of promenade along here that takes you out to wherever you go down from the mountain which might be I don't know down here maybe you sort of build a staircase into the mountain or maybe you follow it the whole way around to somewhere I guess here and then it ends but yes this is definitely cool I am loving this generation. Now this lake might be a little large, I don't know. <laughs> Just kind of my gut feelings, this lake is real big. I mean, it did say large lakes, but this is ocean worthy, I, I think, in my opinion. So I'm gonna fly around for a little bit. I'm just gonna sort of map out, at least try to map out just how large this lake is so we can get a good idea of where its boundaries lie. Ah, finally, here we go, dead end. So I'll bring you all back in a bit once I sort of figured out where this lake ends. Okay, we are back. And boy, am I weird looking. 
Anyway, I had to cut short this adventure, and you'll see why in just a moment. First of all, look at our coordinates. Yep, that's right. We're at 15,000. We have gone from here at the start, across this lake, across it more, went it all the way up in here, down through here, around here, up here, following this whole shoreline, all the way down here, and around, and around again, and around some more, and then down, just down, down, down. And we are down here, and I have no guarantee that it doesn't just go another 5, 10 kilometers down this way. So, yes, these lakes are indeed massive. So massive that they wouldn't really be possible to explore without, I don't know, 20 or 30 friends on a server. I can say, I think that if I were to play on one of these maps, and I discover that I had spawned on, like, this island here, I might be kind of miffed. Well, unless I wanted that experience. But I might be kind of miffed if, you know, there are no resources to be found here. Which, on Bauxite, you wouldn't really find any surface copper. So that could actually be a problem if you started out unlucky enough to land there. Alright, I'm curious. Let's go check out continents. Okay, let's make another new world. We're going to call this one... Motion. Because we got Mo-Ocean. Let's do Continental. Oh, right. Customize. We're going to do the seed of zero. And now, create the world. Okay, we've spawned on right at the edge of the ocean. Wow, okay. So, let's go ahead and up our move speed a bit. And, yep, we've got a real coastline here. So, yeah, let's go ahead and let's just see... We'll go, say, six clicks out and see if there is any shoreline to be had out here. <gasps> Look at that. Six clicks out, we have... Island. Now that... is an island survival challenge with no trees. Yeah, no thanks. That wouldn't be very possible now, would it? We are in the middle of nowhere out here. Look at this. Six kilometers of water. And who knows how far till we find land on the other side. If ever. So, I'm gonna go maybe until we find land, just out of sheer curiosity. But, uh, yeah, I'll bring you all back when we do. If we do. I'll give it, say, five minutes of flying. Well, it didn't take as long as I thought. We're only nine and a half kilometers out. We have hit, ooh, there's a big boy. We have hit what appears to be some kind of land. Just kill that rain again. Polar bears, oh, brown bear. <laughs> wow, look at this crazy glacier. Now that, is 1.18. Look at that mountain. Whew. So yeah, ooh, and more. Now there's a nice plateau to build on. Look at this little house somewhere up here. Maybe not here where it's that cold, but down here perhaps? Little farmland somewhere. Down in the valley, maybe? That is a wild, wild proposition. Okay. Continents checked. Let's try islands now. Alright, here we are. We're going to call this one... Ooh, Locomotion. Because it is so much ocean, it is loco. Island world. Oh boy. Now, the game does try to not put you in the middle of water, but sometimes it does, and if it does, it'll spawn you on a little wooden platform. Let's see what we get. Oh, wow, okay. Yes, thank you. 
Thank you. I'm not a wild fan of these newfangled 1.17 voices. Oh wow, you spawn right next to one of these guys. Neat. Well, let's take a spin around and see how big our little island is, huh? Goes up to here. Uh, uh, and a little foggy. Let's fix that. Bye. Oh, neat. Okay. It's almost like, at least right here, it's almost like it's the inverse of the no oceans where where there would be water, there's land, and when there's land, there would be water. You know what I mean. Words. Limestone sand. Now that's kind of cool. That is a neat little hillock to build on. So this island is actually quite a bit bigger than I was expecting it to be. It's going to make finding resin fun. And, oh look, more islands. Oh, with some bauxite too. Wow, okay. This ain't too shabby. Now that's cool. This sort of flat area just over the water. Hmm, sign me up. Sign me up, absolutely. Oh, and these little islands where you could build like a little bridge over here. Hmm. Yes, please. Just don't, don't fall in, whatever you do. You did. So it looks like the island option isn't like a giant ocean with a few islands. It looks like it's more... I mean, there's ocean, but these islands are pretty expansive. And they're, at least here, they seem to be kind of everywhere. So I think this island sort of style is a lot more playable, or could be a lot more playable, than I was at first anticipating. Which kind of makes me want to try it, I don't know. But yeah, I am actually digging this. I kind of like this more than the continents, in a way. The continents were cool, but it was like a lot of ocean and a lot of land. This is like a lot of ocean and then a little bit of land, and that's actually, to me, that's more interesting. If you are interested in playing 1.18, do not, do not, under any circumstances, load your 1.17 or earlier worlds up in it, or you might be very, very sorry, because this is going to absolutely wreck your world. I have installed this in a different directory, and I have installed or told it to use a different directory for data, and that way I have my guide series and this series very much separated. So yeah, everybody, thank you for checking out this first of several small episodes about the new landform changes and other features coming in 1.18. Now bear in mind that this is a preview version that is intended mostly for mod developers, hello stretching animation, but this is intended for mod developers to be able to update their mods to this new version. It is not intended for long play, and like I had mentioned before, even in the first world that I created, I managed to blow up the world by, I think, having some water break some saltpeter, and that blew up my world. So, if you do want to explore this, make sure you make a backup of your existing worlds, and preferably make sure you launch this in a separate directory and with a separate data directory. There are instructions on the wiki on how to do that yourself. Anyway, look forward to more content like this in the near future, and I'm not going to cover all of the preview editions, especially just the ones that are about bug fixes, but I do want to cover any that add new features and tweaks to functionality. As always, my name has been Kurazar. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Blah, 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 blah,